All ball TV. They scared, but I'm not. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope you guys can hear me because I can't hear myself with these. We gotta fix that stream yard. Favorite perspective, expect it so accepting. They don't like commentario. And you heard the bell. Subscribe. Big Knicks rehab. Big Knicks rehab. What happened? <laughs> the MVP himself. Soon they're going to have to make like two different kind of MVPs, East, West, or, or Atlantic, and what do they call it? Yeah, East and West, like, like baseball. Because you guys, guys start putting some more respect. Respect. Oh, my guy's name, Jalen Brunson, Big Dog Brunson. You kidding me? I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, the ambulance in the background. But, hey, that's New York, baby. That's the Big Dog himself. Cover of Slam Magazine. Shout out to Slam for finally showing up to the party. <laughs> I don't blame the media. Big bank, take little bank. You see the cover, can't knock the hustle. Big time New York, man. Love that. None of them were born when that song came out. <laughs> but the Knicks beat the Bulls. Last night, it was in deciding fashion. Can you say deciding fashion? Is that really a term? In this, in a, in a decisive manner, decisive manner is what I mean to say. Uh, one twenty eight, one seventeen. That was, um, a close. I think it was close. Like the Bulls are competitive, man. I always say that. They have this, this thing about them. I believe that you have to compete for three quarters at least. The last game we played against the Bulls, or two games ago, because they beat us the last time before this, previous time before this, Randall came through and just third quarter destroyed them. This time, Big Brunson destroyed them. And this time, we got Big Flea in the building. What we doing, man? Yo, yo. Big Nick Energy. Big Flea in the building. All we live. Let me fix the, let me make sure the camera's right. Let me make sure the camera's tight. We on Nick's rehab right now. Big Nick Energy. What's good, Faye? I'm chilling. Uh, I, I don't know if you're lagging. Maybe you got to like, reset the phone, come back in, come back out. Oh, he just jumped right out. <laughs> he talking about Big Nick Energy. He's like, blow the whistle. <laughs> I got to stop singing that song online. But um, the Knicks... Let me see. I think it's lagging again, Fleek. I can see you in the back. Yeah, it's lagging. Yeah, it's kind of lagging. You can hear me perfectly? Yo. I can. Okay. I can hear you good, but uh, it's just lagging. You hear me... Are you pretty well? You ain't getting the same energy off the intro, man. I'm here, man. What's up? Let's talk Knicks basketball. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about how you called me at 12 midnight last night. Let's talk about that. Um, That's so crazy because it wasn't even pertaining about the Knicks per se, even though it was Knicks rehab. But. I mean, last night was 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 big time. We got the Knicks on the, on, the, on the cover of Slam Magazine now, right? The baby, the new the new baby Knicks. Come on, man, that's big stuff right there. Slam Magazine covers. People starting to take notice. Yeah. You we know what it is. Have, you know what it is, um, though, bro. Aside from everything else, like aside aside from everything else. 
it's really um it's really the culture like brunson is is is, is great um everybody else on the team is is amazing right og's back you know when, when og's on the floor like you said we look like a completely different basketball team right get mitchell robinson back hartenstein is taking a step deuce mcbride is taking a step josh hart has showed us that he's you know the utility guy of the league the best utility guy in the league right like all of these guys are ascending but man it's that culture that we're building it's how we look i watched kobe white last night and i'm gonna give it back to you i watched kobe white last night uh after the game and he was just like glowing go ahead just glowing <laughs> about Yo, let, let, anybody in the comments, let me tell y'all something. This is not fake chemistry. This is real chemistry, y'all. I know, but as soon as you said that, I'm like, yo, how did he just? <laughs> this is real chemistry, y'all. We didn't, we didn't pre, we didn't pregame this one. This was nah, uh, we didn't pregame this one, not this one. But before but, you play that, man, for the mm -hmm. people, man, what y'all about to hear is Kobe White just gush and glow over the New York Knicks and specifically Jalen Brunson. Um. Take a quick listen to what uh, Kobe White had to say after the game uh, against the Knicks last night. Yeah, we did some really dumb stuff tonight. Um, everybody went through, not just T. Crane. So we're not gonna we're not gonna sit here and single him out. Um, we're a team. Um, so um, yeah, it was all self self induced. I feel like a lot of it, like hat, you know, hats off to them. You know, they play. They're very physical. They're a really good team. They play to their identity. And Brunson's a motherfucker. So. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, uh, a lot of stuff was self-induced, um, I think. And now we all know that as a team, we still to the details. Um, so for us, we gotta, it's, it's too late to, in the season to be having those type of lives. So uh, we got to gotta get our shit together for sure. A lot of cursing there. Uh, what's his name? Kobe White. Big shout out to Kobe yeah. White. Real quick, if uh, Chicago Bulls was any better in terms of record-wise, Kobe White would be – a leading candidate for most improved player. I just want to say that real fast. Well, who's? I mean, who's in the? I can't. If he's if I had here. a, if I had a vote, I would probably my vote would go to Jalen Williams. Okay, see my boy, baby, baby Kawhi. It would probably go to him. I mean, they're both. I think they're both neck and neck. Yeah, I think neck him, neck. uh, him. Like I said, Jalen Williams. Uh, I think. Uh, Kobe White should be in conversation. Um, I'm missing. I'm missing some guys. Uh, yeah, great call, nostalgic Nick. Great call, great call, great call. I think. I think he will absolutely be in the running for most improved player. Um, but back to these Knicks today. You heard Kobe White that he called uh, the man, the myth, the New York legend now himself, uh, Jalen Brunson. He called him. Um, M. Effer. That's a bad ma effer, man. Right, in a great way. Uh, he and Hoops Hype has Jalen Brunson as the second best player in the world in the last month. Uh, highly rated. Joker's number one, no surprise there. Uh, Luca's third, no surprise there. Ant Man, Kyrie, Devin Booker, Paul George. Paul George, but we got to talk the down about Paul George. Uh, LeBron James is eighth. Jalen Green is ninth, and Zion Williamson is tenth. I gotta take back what I said about Jalen Green too. I thought I didn't think he would get it all together. I thought he'll be he'll be a knucklehead. That's you Doka. That's you Doka, man. That's you Doka all the way. Just, yeah, we talked about that. Right, and some and some more grown ups in the uh, in the locker room. Big shout out Fred Van Vliet, Uncle Jeff, Dylan Brooks, Stephen Adams is there over there now. Boban, like you know, real professionals. They over there. So. He's got, you know what I'm saying, Faye? Like he's got and and Udoka. He's got some real professionals in the um in the locker room. Um, so I think he'll I think he'll just be just fine. Gotta navigate um, that baby mama thing, but he'll he'll be I mean, fine. listen, he has like 20 of those now in, in the span of 20 months. Great job, great job. Um Knicks, Knicks 100, my guy. What's up, Knicks 100? Shout out to all you guys always showing up, man. It's 26 of you guys popped in here already. This is crazy, man. 7.30 on a Big random. shout out. 26 people in the building. Big shout out. Yes. Yeah, uh, Wednesday night, random Wednesday night. But it's not random because it's the day after we wanted to hear from us. And we wanted to hear from you guys. No uh, just the Chicago games are going to scare us. But Jalen Brunson, just another, uh, you saw second best, second highly rated 
on on hoops hype i, I saw that wanted to post it because he's right behind joker and all we've been talking about is top five mvp candidate right. uh the first what is he the first player to have four straight games with 35 points eight assists he's just breaking a lot of a lot of records and he's back to back 40 balls he did that twice this year back to back games where he dropped 40 last eight games he's averaging 34 and 8 he last listen Second half of the season, I don't think there's another guard that's played better. Wait, put your glasses back on. <laughs> that was a good one. We got, we gotta, yo, we gotta go back to that. We ain't um, we ain't clip that up. We ain't post that, but we gotta, we gotta mess around with that because that was good, man. If you, that if was... you notice my nicker, if you notice my nicker, I ain't put my glasses back on the entire show after that. If you, you peep that, you did not. I ain't no Shannon Sharp. He's still, I'm telling you, Shannon, Shannon still got to get his name back. Um, <laughs> Yo, but, babe, but, babe, I just thought about that. You did not put your glasses back on. My brother, I love you, baby. <laughs> At least some passive protest, Shannon. What the hell was that? Um, <laughs> Yo, baby, it really didn't put it back on, man. That's great. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Jalen Brunson, again, man, he, he's, he he's, uh, but, like the I told you so thing is not the angle for me with him because mm -hmm. even when we signed him, I didn't think it was a bad signing. I just didn't want to get uh, Donovan Mitchell alongside with him because it made no sense to me. It's like the same miniature miniature style backcourt. of player. Yeah, miniature backcourt. Yeah, know, be, right, right. It, be, you know, it'd be hard player. to you know they'll be hard to defend other backcourts. Right, you know, it it would have been difficult. It just would have been difficult. I think. I think this was a good year. Because don't get me wrong, I think we can upgrade the two guard position, right? DiVincenzo was amazing. DiVincenzo was amazing. But there are better starting two guards above him. What I think makes me comfortable to go forward with him is the fact that, man, Dante defends, man. Dante defends. Dante, a low maintenance guy, you know, very little ego, right? It, does, it, it helps that they played together in college, right? I thought that, you know, people were overblowing that pause, like for, you know, the, 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 the Villanova Knicks and all that kind of thing. But that's natural, innate chemistry that they've had since they were 17, 18 year old kids, you know. And so for that to uh, translate on the NBA level, for that to translate into uh, helping the Knicks be a successful team, man, like. You know, forget everything else. We are a three seed right now in the position to have home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. And we've struggled with injuries all year, man. Huge testament to the Knicks and their culture, man. DiVincenzo at 21 last night. He was three or nine from three. He's he's going to be streaky about it. Like you said, the effort is always there. Uh, always. And that's, again, like playing alongside uh, Jalen Brunson, just – just to fin I guess to finish up, I, like what else can we say about him? Every night's gonna be, because Fabian he shows me something different every night, and not how he gets his buckets because he's a three level scorer, right? He can shoot the three. His mid range game is is insane, and his footwork, his bitty bop. You know what I'm saying? I know what y'all know. I know y'all know what I mean when I mean bitty bop. Like how he moves, right? His angles, how he gets to the rim, like how he takes advantage. Of every matchup, you put a bigger guy on him, he's quick. You put a smaller guard on him, he goes to the block. You put a guy on him that's with, with length, he knows how to find guys. Play makes. Like I said, eight assists over the last eight games. That's nothing to poo-poo. Sorry. Like, Jalen Brunson is absolutely, uh, you know, I wouldn't give him first-team All-NBA, but he's absolutely a, a second-team All-NBA selection this year. No question. Uh, I think um, the, the first team All NBA thing is different this year because yeah, it'll, if, it'll if absolutely those, be. You don't have to be by if, position. If you have the traditional, uh, when you choose them traditionally, then yeah, you go by position like the All Star game. But if you just choose the five best players in the league, mm -hmm. then that's a different story. And I don't. Mm -hmm. and he has room for that. Like I don't see. I don't think. I don't. I don't know if Ant Man had a better season than him. I don't know if if, if Luca necessarily had a better season than him because it's just and maybe that's narrative. Um, Tatum is gonna take off the last month. It seems like like Brunson has been doing this. The, what he had to carry for that amount of time 
is way different. The responsibility, you have to sh shoulder a lot more weight, in my opinion, than Luka. Because Luka wasn't in, they were like teetering with the playing at some point. Then that trade happened, it changed everything. Now, we're I mean, in a different position with, with, with our trade, but mm -hmm. I think the whole top five list, like we saw on that hoops hype list, hoops hype list mm -hmm. it's uh, Joker, Brunson, Doncic, Edwards, and Kyrie Irving at this point. He has Kyrie there for most of the year. Kyrie's a, a top five player, according to two of the top five players on this list on the same team. Luka, does, Jalen doesn't have that. We don't have another Nick on this list until I don't even know when. Mm -hmm. And that's just Isaiah Harlan's team's number 30, actually. The Vincenzo 26. They're, so they're in the late 20s, which is still, don't get me wrong, let's not get that twisted. That's amazing. But that's not two out of the top five players. Right. Like Brunson had to really handle all of this as the lead guy, like you said, the leader of the culture, everything. He's on the front cover of that magazine. It's not just about being a, a blind Knicks fan at this point. It's mm -mm. I mm -mm. still can't believe how good he's, he gets every every game. Every, what we spoke about with the double teams, he's not conquered it, but because it, it's tough for a smaller player, but he's just showing a different way that he can do things. The only thing is going to be for him is the crunch time shots. And I don't know how you can really improve on that besides I don't know how he can get the three-point shot better. Is it in, like is in it a short amount of time? Because I, I would, you know, I would uh I would love to do a deep dive and just take a look at some of the shots that he's taking with, I don't know, two minutes left in the game or under 30 seconds in the game, right? I would like to see what he looks like, what shots he's taking, what what the misses look like. Are they short? Are they back rim? Are they what you know what I'm saying? Because that all makes a difference. You just said that. Jalen Brunson is a top five player in the league this season, could be in the running for uh, All-NBA first team because of the amount of responsibility he has as the best player on the team. But with that being said, bro, when you get down to the last four or five minutes of a game, because you've carried the load for the first 40 minutes of the game, Legs start, you start to lose legs. You've been playmaking. You've been trying to get everybody involved, plus put up 40, right? And defend because you don't get many nights off. He had his hands full last night with Kobe White, right? Like, so you don't get many nights off on the defensive end. You, you shoulder the load on the offensive end. And then, you know, and Fabian is big on clutch time, you know, moments. And it's always about that moment. It's hard for him to finish sometimes, hit that big shot because, you know, you showed the load. There's no Julius to, to you know, take over a quarter. And you can say, yo, Julius, it's the, it's the second quarter going into the half, go crazy. You know, or we're, or we're looking for Julius more than I am looking for my shot, right? He's not here, unfortunately, right now. So it, OG in and out of the lineup. So that takes away offense, right? So I would just ask you, my, my Nick brethren, give him a little grace. I think, you know, he'll be better in, 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 in clutch spots. Um, I know that's a big thing for you. You will not like a motherfucker because he can't hit shots with untrue. two minutes left in the game. Totally untrue. I like Jason Tatum. I love Ant-Man. Nobody. I was rooting for Ant-Man for some, since he got to the league. It's not that I don't, I don't like him. It's that it's there's something that's there. Like when you watch somebody in crunch time, it's it's just a, a, a that's the biggest moment, but that doesn't make every, that doesn't make or break everybody. I don't right. put, I don't think that that's fair. Like we don't ever talk about crunch time when it comes to big men ever because they don't have the ball in their hands. Like it's harder for them to get the dependent. ball. It's a dependent dependent position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think for a perimeter player, we're more harsh on them because if you're a creator and you create your own shot, then yeah. But with Brunson, it's almost understandable why he doesn't do it. Even with Steph Curry, it's understandable. Like, I don't think Steph Curry is the biggest crunch time guy. But you're not leaving him open, but it's understandable why he gets bumped out of out of his uh his 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 uh his spot. Kevin Love locking him up that last play. That was, you know, that was one last play. Nobody thinks Kevin Love is a great defender because of that. You know what I'm saying? Like crunch time. And, and, I, and I and I don't think I remember that play. I was watching it. I, I just he just made him take a tough shot. I don't think that was the greatest defense, personally. That's me, not I, taking away. But, but, but he the made point him take is a tough that, shot. The point is that people will remember that, and they'll, they'll point to it. It's like, oh, you got locked up by Kevin Love. It was just like he had a right. bad, he had a bad crunch time. 
the, the yeah. around the back behind the pass thing. That doesn't mean yeah. that that, turn, oh, yeah, that turnover that, when he threw. Yeah, that turnover. Yeah, yeah. He there, just was had a bunch a, of, there was a bunch of stuff down the stretch of that game. He didn't seem like himself. But the point is, is when we compare him to other clutch guy, even Kobe. Kobe had a bunch of misses, but you're not. You're giving him those double, triple, quadruple teams for that very reason. He is that guy. So Brunson is getting double, triple teams in crunch time. The shot's going to be a lot harder for him because he is that guy. So now, does he have to look to pass? Is there somebody else that we can to look forward to in crunch time? That's, I think, the key because we've, we've gotten him to get rid of the ball sooner in the double team. Is it a play we have to draw up? Is this not Tibbs forte? Those crunch time moments, trying to come draw up something, being creative, is that not his thing? What well, is I, I, I got to I got to take a look. Uh, you know, if if the game is five points or less, what what is our record going in those games? Five points or less going, you know, two minutes left in the game. Do we win those games normally? Do we not? You know, I'd be interested to see a real breakdown because I'm not saying what I'm not saying what you're saying is not valid. I just don't want to overblow him not being clutch, right? He's doing everything else for us, but now we're going to try to figure out a way to dissect it and say, okay, this guy doesn't hit right. timely shots. He can go get, he, he's great for the first 45 minutes of the game, but the last three minutes of the game is like, well, damn, Brunson? No, I, I don't think that that, uh, I don't think that truly is the case. Um, we need to show OG Ananobi some love. We absolutely have to show him some love. The basketball team, the New York Knicks basketball team, looks absolutely different when he's on the basketball court. Huge difference um, from when he's on yeah. the court and when he's not. Even when they sub him out, <laughs> we look different. Right? Like a huge, huge aspect to what we do and, and what we're, what we're going to be doing going forward. Well, I mean, OJ and Anobi is when we got him. I I had no again. I didn't know Brunson was gonna. And for I, I just want I would love everybody who because you watch ball too. I don't remember anybody talking about OJ and Anobi like this. Same thing with Jalen. I don't. Jaylen, nobody spoke about Jalen Brunson like this. Nobody spoke about OJ and Anobi the way I have bro, in the last two months. It's bro, just oh. I can't believe what I'm seeing. How good he is. This is no like respectfully. You guys gotta. This is not hyperbole. I've been consistent. I don't. I haven't seen this since Kawhi. Me personally, that Jason well, Tatum series against K, uh, Kevin Durant when he locked them up, like this is different. When he, he guards the Joker, he guards Embiid, and you saw what happened against Giannis. Mm -hmm. And last night, I, I'll cue it up while you talk. What what he did? I didn't expect him to look that good. And then what he said afterwards, mm -hmm. you guys better be ready. I don't know what you. Me talking is one thing. Me watching him wait. Okay, I see you grab that up, OG. What's that about? But then after the game, when he goes, "Yo, I ain't even thinking about that till you ask me that question." Uh oh. Those are he's a very cerebral dude. I could tell this guy's an android. Flea. This guy is an android. I could tell the way he talked. Don't be fooled. The way he said, "I ain't even thinking about it till you said." That means y'all better get ready. I want my buck 50. That's what he said. Nah, give me my I buck want 50. my buck 50. Give me my That's buck what he's 50. Saying. <laughs> Talk about it. Yo, listen, man. Um, You know, OG just got recognized last season as an all-NBA defender. And he made the second team. That was the first time in his career that he made an all-NBA team, an all-NBA defensive team. Um. With him missing games this year, do I expect him to make a first or second team this year? Probably not because of the, you know, the lack of consistency in, in and out of lineups. But by no means should anybody overlook the effect that he had once he became, once he got traded and became a Nick, offensively and defensively, right? So even if he did make an all defensive team and he made second team this year, I ain't mad at that. I don't think you can be mad at that. There is a huge sample size of what we look like with him on a defensive end, and there's a huge sample size of what we don't or what we look like without him. So, shit, even if he does, even if he does get it, I think it's still well deserved. Well, well deserved. That is a yeah. guy everybody rants and raves about. 
oh, you know, I love guys that can guard one through five. There ain't many guys in the league that can legitimately guard one through five. OG Ananobi is one of those guys. Uh, so let's cue that up. OG after the game just or oh, two nights ago, excuse me. No, that was last night. Yo, I'm wow. I'm in Yo, I'm in shambles. <laughs> you got some rest today. I hope you got some rest today. I did. I did. Good. Hold on, hold on. Where's the, where's the volume at? Get it together, YouTube. Well, boom, it was good. It seemed like your teammates were making an effort to get the ball in your hands. Did it feel that way? Uh, yeah, you know, some, uh, some we're in some plays, and then, yeah, the game went on. Continued to find me, and I was being aggressive. Overall, how is your confidence growing over these three games now that you're back? Oh, it's getting better and better every game. Were you, were you expecting Tibbs to pull you out after the fourth foul? The fourth one? Yeah, 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 I knew. Yeah, yeah, the fourth one, yeah. Yeah, but you, you were able to, you finished the game before, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have to change? Yeah, game? yeah, just stay out of the way. <laughs> Don't foul. <laughs> it looked like you were a little bit more aggressive offensively. Is that a fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what led to that? Oh, just watching film, uh, realizing where I could have been more aggressive, where I could find shots, where I could look for my shot. Can you describe the two-man game you had going, not only with Jalen, but with Isaiah, working your cuts to the basket? Oh, just, uh, you know, they're great passers. So whenever uh, I see them driving or whenever I, I see them driving or coming off the screen, I just try to get in their vision, either cut or spot up, and they usually find me. How difficult was it, especially with those four fouls, to guard DeRozan in that second half? Oh, yeah. Um, always hard guarding DeMar. He's a very crafty, very good player, uh, amazing player. So it's always hard, but especially with four fouls. So you just got to keep your hands back and just stay down. Were you as surprised as the rest of us to see them kind of throw the, the alley-oop off the backboard? And... Yeah, no, I don't think anyone knew what was going on. <laughs> the win now, magic no. Well, I, did he mention the thing about his elbow? No, but he did mention them, them Doofuses throwing the and both of them missing the dunk off the backboard. Uh, Tory Craig and and who was that? Andre Drummond. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not surprised by anything Andre Drummond does. <laughs> That's just he does stuff like that. When I saw that he was the guy involved in that silly alley oop. That's um, funny. Though. By the way, we'll get to you guys' pessimism in the comments. Jesus, are you serious? Well, big shout out to Nostalgic Nick. He said this is the show is dope. We appreciate you, big dog. Appreciate you, man. But Nick's who is this? Nick's 100. We got to get it together, my nigga. What I, I my dog talking about. What my dog talking about. Let's, 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 let's I wouldn't be surprised it. if the Pacers swept us. No, nah, we're not diving into that right now. Briefly. I don't believe that. With OG and Anobi, he said my elbow is perfectly fine. Think about the way he yammed it. They were feeding him in the rock yesterday. I didn't expect him. I guess. You, I forget. I'm 41, bro. I guess I forget what it is to be 20, 26, 27, and you can spring right back up like a, a young spring chicken. And just, you know what? After a week or two, I'm getting into shape. Him mm. and Mitchell Robinson, I don't think you guys understand what this means, the way they're going to wipe points off the floor. Me and Flea, we always talk about Flea things. I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record. I always, talk, I always relate this to football. And it's funny because I hear a lot of football references lately, Flea. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. This this the, the game of basketball is like a moving line of scrimmage. And this guy, OJ Nanobi, he disrupts that line of scrimmage all the time. He sometimes he, he's he's like Jordan in a way where he overplays. He can overplay. Westbrook is really bad at that. That's been the knock on Westbrook. He never played enough disciplined defense, but he's such a super athlete. He he would have been an, an amazing defender. OG, he anticipates a lot. He understands coverages. He understands the moment. The, the just wiping the and ones from Giannis and making sure you know you you earn your those two points. I'm not gonna let you just get that just because the referee called a foul. Nah, he's. I don't the 21 points and all that. That's gonna be streaky just like Divincenzo and all of them. They're gonna feed him the ball. Make sure he's you know. You want to feed him like a big man. When the big man back in the day, he was the guy. Who, the point guard knew I gotta get him the ball because if not, he's not gonna you know he's not gonna be as motivated. But that's not his game. His game is just creating that time period where there's enough plays where you're where you're able to swing. At least if you get two or three or four stops in a row, that's what they're capable of. Because remember, that's four to ten points, right? Four four possessions is twelve points. If you times that by fourteen, uh, by four, if you get four four point plays at at worst, 
16 points. That's too, too, too crazy. But the point is, that's 12 points on average that you're wiping off the floor, especially with this Pacer team that you're talking about. We talking about the you're scared the Pacers are gonna go on a, on a 12 0 run against us. Not with that guy on the court. Yeah. Not with that guy on the court. And now with Mitchell Robinson out there, you ain't getting no damn 12 0 run. You're getting smacked. You're getting yeah, smacked I, and you're getting exposed. I can't see us being swept by the Pacers. We have home court advantage as well. I I, I can't see in any in any scenario. Who else got hurt? Uh, who who posed that? Who posed that that comment? Who was that? Nostalgic that, Nick. That's our nicker. Yeah, my my nicker. Uh, uh, it, what's like something drastic has to happen for us to be swept? Like OG can't play the series. Brunson t- twists the ankle or something. Like th- swept. Yeah, you gotta give me some. You gotta give me some more. Uh, you know, help me understand that. I'm over here flabbergasted right now. How he, he's saying a Hall of Fame coach with a Hall of Fame offense keeps sleeping on the Pacers. Listen, that tells that me Hall nothing. Of, it tells me something. It tells me it that tells me know, nothing. It tells me we'll absolutely call out, nothing. Real we'll call, I will prepare you. But Great I coach. think he's forgetting that Halliburton has it. He just became Halliburton last night, maybe. He's been ho- hobbling the whole season. And who's got him thinking this, Stasi Nick? Who's got him Brunson? Halliburton. I, nobody. Flee. There's nobody on planet Earth who was, who was propping up Halliburton like me the last three years, yeah. missing out on the fact that he was drafted. Yeah. We, we, we didn't draft him or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. I know his weakness. He's weak. That's his weakness. You think Brunson going to stay in front of him? He'll th- stay in front of Brunson and do what? They don't have any defense. And, and again, teams but like that's that, what call they're out. the ones that get exposed first in the playoffs. But that's, the what call out, that's what Carlisle's problem is with his team currently. They don't defend the way that he is used to. You're talking about a guy that won a championship 2011 with defenders like Sean Marion, Deshaun Stevenson, Jason Terry, Tyson Chandler, Jason Kidd. Like, that's the team that was over there. Let's talk about some of the Pacer teams that he had. Or Steven Jackson, Jermaine O'Neal, Al oh, Herring, okay. Ron. Like, we talk about some of those that the Pacers oh, do oh, not. Don't forget have. about Jamal Tinsley. Big, big Tins, of course. But the, everybody that I named just now, there's nobody on the Pacer team right now that defends at anywhere near that level. Maybe. Pascal, maybe, but that's and it. He, I, I just don't. Miles Turner, he doesn't rebound well enough for me, and doesn't and doesn't defend enough for me to be seven feet. I have an all time worst tweet. I talk, I talk about my great tweets. I called Steph Curry the logo in like 2013. The logo, the logo. But I have an awful one. I wanted to trade Mitchell Robinson four years ago for for Miles Turner. Awful one, <laughs> or three years ago, but. Not that he's going off with a lot of potential and thinking Mitchell Robinson will be hobbled, but Miles Turner is not. I don't think he's someone that would even thrive in the, in the Thibodeau. He'd be in a truest role at this point because he can't be. He's not reliable. The Pacers, they got rid of Buddy Hill. I think they got even worse since they got rid of Buddy Hill. And I just don't see that's a team. Again, I spoke about the Orlando Magic because of they're the same team. They're defensively, but we have the counter to that. They need Jonathan Isaac and Suggs to win to beat us. They need that, and if, especially if we're healthy. Well, you know, nobody's healthy. Boncaro is going to be in the torture rack, and once you X him out for for four or five games in a row, it's going to be tough for him, bro. And Boncaro is tough. Do not get me wrong; he might be the guy I need to see four or five games in a row in OG to see what the hell's going on. But come on now, OG's dealing with Giannis, Joker, and B. We've seen it. We've seen it. I I don't know. Uh, like I, the Pacers are nowhere near uh, as a threat. Let's knock that off. That I, adamantly, I haven't seen all you've given me is narrative, Hall of Fame coach, and a Hall of Fame type of. of That's offense. what I'm saying. That tells me nothing. Like, yeah. and I understand. Big shout out to Nostalgic Nick. Like, I understand, you know, his premise. But hey, <laughs> Carlisle got to deal with, with with the personnel that he has. That he has to deal with the personnel that he has. You know, yeah, Matherin is out for the rest of the season, right? Is Matherin playing? Yep, that's exactly what somebody said in the comments. Oh, see, I didn't even see that. Yep. 
Right. See? And I just thought about that. I was like, wait a minute. Matherin's not even playing. One of their better players. Like, so that that ag, you, you, now you're asking Aaron Nesmith to, <laughs> to, to be that guy? Y'all got rid of Buddy Hill, right? So they've maintained. They're still, they're still a playoff team. Um, but sweep the Knicks. I know we're spending some time on this, so that just threw both of us completely off. Sweep? Yeah, I just... The only teams healthy that can beat us, in my opinion, is going to be the Celtics and, and the 76ers. Because to me, you know, we'll talk about Giannis in a second, but nobody's, uh, is this it? Nobody's talking about Philly. Philly, you know, with Embiid coming back. They've won about six, seven games in a row. Yeah, uh, decisively. Aside, and, um, aside, but, aside from Dallas, aside from Dallas, they one of the hottest teams in the league. But MB, this is how he was going after a ball last night. And this is how he ends up. Dude just got bad luck, man. It is no, there's no brainiac analysis for this dude. It's just it's just a string of bad luck in, in, in terms of him staying healthy. And I'm gonna always say it. He could drop, he could drop a few pounds. He could drop a couple. He doesn't need to be that heavy he could drop a couple and still be powerful explosive you know what i'm saying take some of that pressure off your knees man you could drop a couple that's just how i feel about him i've always felt that about him um this was probably the first year maybe last year too that i felt like okay he was in you know relatively good shape but for the most part the dude uh is an amazing player i just feel like he he could do a little bit better with his conditioning and then the conditioning will trickle down to you know him staying on the floor i i just there's no way you fully like we're relying on og mitchell robinson we have the same kind of problem in terms of we're relying on guys to come back from injury mm -hmm. um and randall's not coming back but they're all these guys that we're relying on I could still see us beating beating teams with just OG and Mitchell Robinson not there, and vice versa. If Mitchell Robinson is just there, and then OG is not there. I could see us beating the Pacers still. I could see us beating Cleveland still. Mitchell Robinson's there, but you know, the Magic is a tougher matchup to me. The the Celtics are a tougher match. Seven game series, tougher matchup. Even as much as I hate the Bucks, we'll, we'll talk about them in a second. That you're relying. It's a lot of weight. No pun intended to to your point. For Embiid to rely on Embiid to come back with, with two months of surgery, that's a big guy. And this is not surprising. This just, always happens at the end of the season. He's always breaking down. This is around that. It's, it's just about that time. About Embiid, that time. No disrespect. Respectfully. This is this is why, to your point earlier, uh, who's over here scared of somebody getting Giannis? Somebody mentioned getting Giannis and uh or Booker. And it's I scoffed at it at first, but that's the reason why you do go after the even though Giannis is going through the injury right now, and Devin Booker, who hasn't who's not really injury prone. But at some point, do you think we're gonna have to make that move where we're not because we still go through knickknack injuries as well and tip style of play? Is mm -hmm. the is the Giannis big dog um Devin Booker? Is that big summer gonna gonna happen for us soon? Because if not, it's gonna be Julie uh Jalen Brunson breaking down at the end of the game or at the at the end towards the end of the contract. What do you think? Do we have to go after the big dog at, eventually? Well, we, we've already we, uh, we already uh, created a, a, a the climate, the culture. Uh, uh, eventually, a a a star will be disgruntled. This is just the landscape of the NBA now. It is what it is. There's there has an entertainment value to it now, aside from basketball. So at some point, there will be a disgruntled superstar level player that's ready to change locations y'all could y'all can think Giannis is loyal to the soil with, with milwaukee all y'all want at some point he's going to want to leave there he's done everything that he can there individual accolades brought a championship to a team that was devoid of one for 50 years right like he's done he's checked all the, he's checked all the boxes mvp back to back defensive player of the year best player in the world at one point, right? So he's checked all the boxes. Um, I hate to see him go down last night, um, non-contact injury. Um, 
This is the second year in a row, though, that at the end of the season, his body is breaking down. Um, so, you know, that gives me cause to pause briefly, kind of look at what's happening, what's going on. Is it is he taking on too much? You would think that the load is lighter now because Damian Lillard is there. Um, I think that there are and I'm not going to get into a Bucks deep dive. I just feel like that there are some things that they can do with that ball club to upgrade the roster. And just adding Damian Lillard and now taking a step back and just looking at what we have. Still a top three team in, in, in the East. Uh, one of the better teams in the league, whether anybody believes that or not. But now we got a chance to look at what we have. And it's like there's some spots. There's some spots on that on, on that roster that desperately need to be upgraded. So, again, I think Giannis has that 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 uh, that organization by the balls. And they need to make, you know, they need to make some changes over there. And they haven't even gotten into the playoffs yet. And we know we look at what they look what they look like. But, you know, again, I haven't said one word about Glenn because I have nothing to say about Glenn. It ain't about Glenn right now. I'm talking about the players on the floor. Right. So um, where I was getting at, though, Fabe, is that I am. I am OK. Is that an overplay thing with, with Doc Rivers already? You think you had enough of that? Oh, if I'm gonna be honest with you, bro, like I think the Doc Rivers not a good, not a great coach. Uh, this that I think that that's that's narrative and that's that's you know that's talk. That's just talk. He's a he's a he's a he's he's an all time great coach. I, I don't I don't care what nobody says. He's an all time great coach. He you know. Players swear by him. There are players that don't swear by him. But there are great players that don't swear by a lot of great coaches either. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't – I can't take the word of a bunch of players that don't like, I don't know, Rick Adelman. Because there are a bunch of guys that love Rick Adelman. So, like – Who doesn't like Rick? I think he's – Rick Adelman is totally underrated. Right. But I'm just – I was just being – you know, I'm saying Rick Adelman – you know, for, for the conversation, you know, we'll find out that there were players that didn't like Jason Kidd, but there's, but, but Giannis swears by him, right? Giannis never wanted to see him go. Right. So, oh, you know nice. what I mean? Like that whole Boston team and yeah, they won in 08, but people forget they were right back into the finals in 2010. KG don't get hurt in 09. They may be in the finals three straight years in a row. So uh, we don't shout out to M3 M3 TV. Uh that Dame Holiday Exchange will be exposed now. Dame plays no defense. He did just they just Holiday did just implement got it extended, right? I believe so in Boston. Yeah, but, yeah, Holiday but, just signed a four year $135 million extension. But they did just put uh Beverly in the starting lineup over Beasley, right? I did see that. I don't that won't, that won't last, and that's only because Beasley's been was was struggling with his shot. But that won't last. But so you I mean, is that that's normal to you? I don't think Beasley should become a excuse me, especially the way everyone because for me, I'm the guy that will bench anybody. You know me, yo, Randall, you come off the off the bench, bro. I, I know, brother. About? I know. So Doc, Beasley, he should not be on my uh, sensitive list. Like, hey, wait, should we treat Beasley with a with a kind heart here? But this is bro, Doc Rivers we're talking about who didn't make this decision. Doc is, I think Doc is trying to figure out lineups and what he has to do to win a playoff series this year with the team that he has. This is not the roster. I promise you, this ain't the roster that he wants. But this is the roster that he has, right? And so you got to roll with it until you get into the summer and you know, start chirping and see what happens. But he's rolling with what he has. He's trying to figure out the best, you know, the best lineups and, and, and the best ways um, to get the best out of my guys. You know, I I think he's just going to, like, start tweaking things over the next two to three games. Giannis is not playing uh, the last three games of the season. So he's just going to mess around with lineups and see what works, what doesn't. You know, when Giannis is out, out of the game, you know, what lineups can I go to that's going to, you know, uh, you know, bring me offense. Okay, Giannis is out the game. If I need to get stops, what lineups can I play out there? You know, he's gonna have to. He's got to be. He's got to be creative. We're gonna have to see Doc really be a coach. Oh shit! Is this true? Mister C passed away. 
Yes, sir. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. C. Oh, wow. God bless the dead. Yeah, rest in peace, Mr. C. Damn. Like, I wasn't yeah. a big Mr. C fan, like, but... I, I mean, it ain't, about, it ain't about being a fan. Mr. C was one of the best, so, like... He's legendary, like... Legendary. You know, relationship with Biggie. All um, of course, you know, all his stuff that he went through with, with, with uh, he was outed with, <laughs> he was yeah, I, the, I didn't want to go there, but I'm just, listen, yeah. I'm going everywhere, baby. That's, that's part of, remember, there's a, there's a, um, podcast with him and Mayno, where the way he's hugging on Mayno, and this is I post know, all know, the stuff that came out about him and his sexuality. He's, yeah. to me, pretty personally, and people don't want to go, they go crazy. I like seeing that, because it's just like, Mayno, for him to be, you know, like a man's man. Just image wise, he's sitting there just like that's my guy. We're from the same neighborhood. This guy's a legend. Y'all ain't disrespecting him. It, what did he do to me? And just to see that for me, on top of the fact that, come on, man, this is Biggie's DJ. This is, I just gotta give a minute to Mr. C, man. Like this is a this that this is. I didn't know that till right now. This is that's oh, this no, it's real time. I didn't. Oh, I, I didn't know. You, yeah, I didn't know if you knew that. Okay. No, I didn't. I'm just you know going through Twitter. Nah, that's. Yo, God bless the dead, Mr. C. Like, um, wow. Um, condolences to him and his family. Um, another one. This makes you feel, realize how old you are. Yeah. And we go, we gotta bust so much time here. That's why we enjoy you guys being on here, Nick's rehab. Shameless plug. But we want to make the best of things before we, before we get out of here. Fifty six years old, man. Young dude, man. Fifty six ain't. I used to think that was old when I was younger, but then the older you get, you go young. Bro, I, I work with dudes who was seventy. Like, mm. and they're just, I'm like, I hope I look like that when I'm 70. These right. guys are just like throwing around the heavies. Yeah. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Yeah. I wish I hope I'm built for that, but um, yeah, God Talk bless you, Mr. C. Talk about my grandmother all the time, 92 years old, still walks four miles on the track every morning, still gets in the whip and drives her brand new Subaru, still goes to the grocery store, still watering grass. And you know, she's you know, so I do aspire to uh live long so absolutely um i have yeah I had the east in shambles like we are let me check the i know we are a game up the orlando milwaukee game just started mm. and two, that's an important one that they're gonna play two games yep the end of the season and tomorrow. Giannis is not guy. playing any of them john smith two starters out for bucks versus orlando orlando favored to win both games against bucks Magic will finish 48, 49 wins. Knicks will need 40, 50 wins to get second seed or drop to the third. Yeah. Because the fact that we have we have less losses than um Orlando, that that's a big deal. But also what's a big deal is that Orlando's pretty streaky. Like yes. especially without without Jalen Suggs and um and Jonathan Isaac. They're the ones that Jonathan Isaac, he's just another guy like oh, an even worse version than OG in terms of uh his injury condition because that guy one through five is dominant it's just a flash though he doesn't get to go out there if he did that for 35 minutes a game 65 games a year now or we would talk you, differently about him okay i agree i agree yeah he's the the talent but he's been injured like you talk about an injury bug man he's been just clipped and then jalen suggs of course imagine you had jalen suggs and him that just changes like jalen suggs is G, like he he's so I know he's great great because he's annoying he's annoyingly good he's annoyingly just all the effort he shows and then to have that team behind him and, and have him or him in front of that team guarding Brunson you know like that's what you're scared of because they but for me I ain't scared of them because because uh, Jonathan Isaac's not there we could figure that out they need Jonathan Isaac because Franz Wagner like you ain't no turkey glue bro I don't know what's going on with you. I love, I used to, I love Franz Wagner, but he got a little handle everything. You can't shoot, bro. You can't they, shoot. They'll go through some growing pains as a team. Like I said, I think that that would be a tougher matchup than the Pacers. Like, I think we could sweep the Pacers. How about that? Like, I, the, the, the Magic would be a tougher matchup. The Magic clearly have the more dominant the most dominant player on the floor, right? Like, Paolo is going to create matchup problems for us. Yeah, you can roll out OG on this and and let him take his best shot, but we, we're going to... Let me find out going in this. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Um, 
No, I just think that us matching up with Orlando is a tougher matchup than um than it is with Indiana or that it is with uh you know even Boston. I think we match up well with Boston. They have the better team. They have the better team flat out. I'm not not going to act like they don't. But we match up well. And I'm I didn't fine. Even, I didn't even jump from the top rope and elbow my man Flea in the back of his noggin. Forever disrespecting Odin and Obi. And it is disrespect because the way I'm talking about him, anything is disrespectful. When you anything have... is disrespectful. Anything <laughs> is disrespectful. Shit. Because he wasn't talking like this last week. Right, Everybody right. was so depressed. Let's get this clear. I hate to... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take, the, take the hat off. Show the curls. Let him know. Nobody was in the same vein as this. Everybody was totally depressed. And I said, I'd feel this way if OG is, is out for the season. I, if you tell me he's out for the year, now I'm depressed. Now I'm sick. But I didn't hear any rumblings about OG and OB being out. And when that happened, I was like, what you mean he's not out? He's coming back? Remember, Josh Hart, tried, Josh Hart, you little, you shouldn't have said that, man. Be nice to Josh. Effort. We love Josh. Uh, we do. And he was right. But you, you scared me, man. You try to scare me. Because then Josh Julius falls best player off. Of the team this year. Second, that's Josh uh, Hart, second most important play on the team this year. He been turning those up there. Up there. Josh has done team. a lot this year, man. I have, no, I have nothing bad to say about Josh Hart. We're Except not gonna deflect from the fact we're not gonna deflect from the fact that last week Julius Randle goes down, the whole Nick fandom is depressed. Except yeah. for one man, yes, in stand shining on armor. Go ahead, stand on your pedestal and 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 and, and fro frolic through your blonde hair. Go ahead, go. No, 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 because it has flee this week talking about we can match up against the Celtics. I've always said we can match up against the Celtics. Don't you disrespect me? When, uh, when, and when Julius Randle went down, did you say the same thing? I'm. I, hey, when Julius went down, my heart hurt. Okay, but but always means like there was never a time that you didn't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> he got me. We got him. What Yo, was that show? But we got him. We, we got fucking him. got him. But <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking Yo, about. Yo, right? that shit, Drewski. Yo, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that meme. We got him. We oh, shout got him. Shout out to um to M3 TV. Always kind words. Um keeps us going 63 years old. I live every day in need of a bone marrow transplant due to a blood to blood cancer. Live love. Love. Yo, how love do we get M3. more attention to people like that? I'm sorry. How do we get more attention to people who need who just who need that? I think. I think we need to reach out to that brother personally and see how we able to do that. Right. You didn't get that. You didn't pick out that comment for no reason. I think, I think we need to connect with him offline and see how we bring some attention to that. Seriously. Like how do we bring attention to that? Um, keep living, keep living M3 TV, keep living, man. Keep praying, keep a positive attitude, a positive spirit. Um, you just you just gained two family members just now. You just gained two more family members, man. So, you know, much love to you. And uh, if 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 Fabian doesn't connect with you, I will because we definitely want to find out how do we, um, you know, bring light and attention to uh, you know what you're going through right now. So we we appreciate your transparency and vulnerability, man. Thank you. And like the style you Nick said, you got this, fam. Stay positive. Yes, sir. Um. I like this LB so wavy. Milwaukee's playing the Magic twice and Thunder once for the rest of the season. I want to look up the the standings real quick. Okay. Because Luca Brasi. Why Luca Brasi? What happened? Nah, he just had a fade away off the glass. He missed it though. But oh, oh Luca. They got they got they got Jaime Hawkins. Running around after him tonight. What do you think about Jaime defensively? Excellent. Really? Excellent. Not not a little, not man. He's kind of good. Excellent. Excellent defensively. 
excellent, has all the tools, has all the uh, – every time I watch him, he understands the concepts of playing defense. That's that's not something that most young players have, but we forget Jaime Hawkins Jr. is a four-year player out of UCLA. Went back for his senior year last season, right? So he's a guy that knows how to play basketball, um, high IQ for the game, and couldn't have come into a better franchise under a, a, a better assortment of players and coaches, right? You walk into your rookie season with Jimmy Butler. At the beginning of the season, Kyle Lowry. You have Bam Adebayo, and you're being coached by Eric Spolstra. I, like, you're, you're set up for success. So big shout-out to Jaime Hackers Jr. Mm. Um, trying to raise awareness. Thankfully, absolutely, uh, brother. So, in the standings, <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to pull that up with the the Western Conference was because it's tight. Yeah, man, like they're tight down there, seven through ten. We're not worried about that right yeah, now. Them, that we, uh, that that one through six, man. It, like, can oh, we one stick three? Can we stick any of the teams in the East? If you had to make a power rankings, how many of the teams in the West one through six make your top five? <laughs> it's crazy. It if you if you did a power ranking right now, Fabe, how many out of the West in the top six would make your top five power ranking? Oh, uh, for me personally, it's Denver, yeah. uh huh, Dallas, and maybe Minnesota. Okay, and then Boston. Yeah. Boston, okay, well, healthy, yeah, everybody healthy. I mean, if everyone's healthy, it's the Knicks, bro. In the in, in at, at five, hell yeah, the top five team, their top power five rankings. Teams. Those right. are, I think, I think with power rankings, we are uh, we kind of oh, just be over. I, I, that clearly is done to make us talk about whatever list it is, right? But right. power rankings are in spite of the record. Who do you think? You know, pound for pound is going to take anybody out tonight. If you had to pick one team tonight to win a game, that's the top. That's your power ranking. And, like, even the Lakers have an outside. Like, their power rankings are high when LeBron, I'm going to say three. Oh, yeah? We have a power ranking game? Let me say three night talk, see what happens. Right, right. Especially when they string together eight out of eight out of eight out of nine or nine out of ten, right? When they string that together, you know, and we start looking at power rankings, it's like, well, you can't you can't not put the Lakers in there, right? They're playing right. some of the best basketball. So yeah, I got you. Yeah, uh, we have don't forget we have Dallas first round pick this year. Lou Boogie, I think they Lou just, Boogie. They're guaranteed to be number 24, like a mid 20th. I just read that or mid 20s pick now, Lou Boogie. I just read about that. Yeah, good, yeah, yeah. good reminder. Because yeah. last yeah, year, good we reminder, good reminder, Lou Boogie. That's why Dallas tanked last year. They were like, nah, we ain't making no playoffs. Forget that. Bastards. I, and I remember yeah. when they did it. Kyrie didn't play no more. Then they sat Luca. They was like, "Oh shit, yeah, these dudes definitely not even trying to make the playoffs or play in." Yeah, fine. Unless they got find the actual draft pick, they were gonna they were gonna go ahead and do it. They didn't care. They, they, you mm. know, you know what I'm saying. Derek Lively out for the rest of the season. By the way, I just saw that earlier. The best three games. Yeah, yeah. Derek Lively's missing the last three games, so they they're gonna have to pull through. And they're last through. night, I was in an intense conversation about. Dallas possibly making a run. Now, Lively doesn't, it bothers me because I really like Lively, right? But again, still rookie. So there was this would be his first time in the playoffs, his first rodeo. He would need experience, but Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington have been amazing for the Dallas Mavericks, bro. Amazing. And we said. We said no. We no. Now it's we. Now I'm speaking okay, French. Now speaking. no. I, I wish Dom was here so I could do. Just, yeah. Dom yeah. hasn't so had hard. these moments where he laughed at me this year. The only <laughs> thing he's been right about so far, he should have stuck his, to his guns. Was hard. <laughs> oh yeah, out. yeah, yeah. But um, um so Gafford no, and no, 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 no. I, I, I'll be, I'll be honest. Let, let's, 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 let's be real now. Fabian, when that trade happened, we absolutely loved the OG trade because we're Nick fans, right? But we quickly pivoted to yo dallas getting gaff and pj washington is sneaky probably the second best trade 
after OG. Second best moves made by an organization during the trade deadline. And it has paid huge dividends for that team. 11, uh, they both averaging 11 points a game, right? One of them, both of them starting, I believe. So, but Gaffer has games where he doesn't even, where he won't miss a shot. It's just, he won't even miss a field goal, man. Yeah, but I think lively if he doesn't play, he's injury prone. My brothers, my brothers. Oh, OG. OG. Um, what up, what up my brothers? What's up? If lively doesn't play, it's like, they, to me, they're missing the, what do you call that? The chain. It's like a, when you have, when you, to me, the Phoenix Suns had that a couple years ago. You got a team that just has nonstop a chain, just all right, lobby sits down. Now, Gabbard's in the game. When are they missing the lob threat? Like, mm -hmm. uh, all, all time. So now it's a lot more pressure on Gafford. That takes away a lot for them. Hopefully, they, well, not hopefully, but for their sake, you know, they're going to need lively, man. They really are. Nah, I, oh, I, boy, what's going on? I didn't know he was out of here. OG, no, what up, baby? Yeah, what? Oh, man, I can't complain, man. Sorry, I'm running a little late. What, uh, what's the topic that y'all discussing right now? We were talking about oh. how the, the, the standings, how, uh, in the in the West, oh, that's what we're gonna say. Uh, Flea, OKC, they're gonna have to play. Who did they, they say he was playing? Oh, Orlando Milwaukee, playing. Mil Milwaukee's playing the Magic and OKC. Magic twice oh. and OKC once to finish out the, the three uh, games of the season. No, I thought he said Orlando was playing. Hold, 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 hold. I said the Magic. You ah, okay, about so Orlando, hold Orlando's on. playing Milwaukee twice and then the OKC Thunder. Right. Oh, 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 said, oh, the remaining, oh no, I thought. Y'all talking about the remaining of the games. I know our Knicks. We got Chicago, Brooklyn, and we got uh Boston Thursday, right? Right. Close out the season. Right. And, uh, if we stay in that right, and if we stay in that third seed, what we playing either Miami or Indiana. Hope ho hopefully we could hope yo, OG, we had somebody in the comments and big shout out to them. Uh nostalgic Nick says uh the Pacers could possibly sweep us. Your thoughts. Come on, man. I'm not listening, man. These are the same people that early in the early in the season, and this is no knock on Halliburton, great player. These are the same people that was praising Halliburton, saying he's better than Brunson, and we see right now it's not even close. I've been saying that. So for people to say that, that's just straight Knicks hate. And I think at this point, I'm over Knicks hate. I'm not responding to Knicks hate. Now, you know, if a person says, hey, man, you know, if they break it down and say, you know, this would be a tough series, but I think the Knicks may lose in six or seven and break it down. But just to say we gonna swept, gonna get swept by like, come on, man. I'm not. Well, that was a Nick. That was a Nick fan. To, to his credit, he's a Nick fan. He ain't so no Nick fan. To... No, he ain't. <laughs> I think. I think. I no, think he ain't. Just... I'm, get, I'm, get, I'm getting that old fake Nick fans. I'm. I'm. I'm over them. OG, OG think, said, think OG been... said, if you ain't post a slam picture, you ain't a Nick fan. I'm yeah. hollering. Over here. Real talk, man. I, like, if you ain't put that in your story, I'm sorry, Fabian, just real quick. If you ain't put that in your story on your post, like, how are you a fan of any team if you never post them, never discuss them? Nah, I'm, I'm sick of all of that. When it comes to my Knicks, don't play with us. Nah, man. No. I love this energy. I, think, um, I love this energy for my OG, by the way. Go ahead, Fabian. Well, it's just the way to react to, like, the end of the – like, we're not used to being this good or potentially, like, this great going to the playoffs, and people right. are – like, they don't know how to respond to it. Like, they're so – like there, but you know, we gotta we gotta calm down. If you if we was around us in real life, we'd be like, yo, man, calm your ass down. Because <laughs> I'm not I'm not calming down. I'm sorry. No, not you, not you. Oh, oh, oh. The, the guy who was saying that we're scared, the scared of the pacer, like out of all teams, he said the pacer. <laughs> that nigga like, OG nah, said I'm not calming down. You niggas yeah, you. not <laughs> hold on, fleet, y'all. Let me just say this real quick. You know why I'm not calming down? Because this is the first time in I'm going to say probably damn near 20 years that we actually have something to root for. We have a legit bona fide superstar when healthy. Lost you, OG. I think we lost him. But, but to his point, yeah. He's absolutely that's, what it, that's what it is. like, And that's what that's what we mean by that. Like, it's not <clears throat> I, the Carmelo years. Mm-hmm. Even with Patrick Ewing, it was a lot more hopeful. And it was like writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. This, to me, you want to be led by. Like, Brunson is, is fun to be led by. And also, like, him getting him getting better every single night. 
means the Knicks get better every single night, and they're watching that. And you could tell just the, they're inspiring us, so we're inspired by it. I think that's what you were talking about, boy. Like we were really, I got like we yeah, really. I, like, I, 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 I got a question for people. y'all when y'all when y'all get a second. Right, r- real quickly, because I got a phone call, so I'm sorry that interrupted the live. I apologize for yeah, that. Yeah, so good, bro. I'm going to just be real quick. So, yeah, so Fleek asked this question. My thing is this. I've, I've never seen no other sports media, fan base, no nothing, say anything good about the Knicks. Like, we are the only fan base that we can't celebrate being good. It's yeah. like if we celebrate being good, now the new thing is, but if y'all lose in the first round, I mean, oh, this was for nothing. What? Yeah. It's like that's, it's it's like that's, that's yeah, garbage. It's, that's garbage. Look, when the last time we had an MVP candidate? When the last time we had a bona fide superstar, a bona fide all star, a player that you actually want to root for and love to watch? Like right now, the Knicks is probably top five for me. I'm gonna say top three. Where no matter who they play against, you watch them because they're exciting. How do people that, not? Right? <laughs> yeah, yep, we was just right. saying. We was just saying that. Yeah, just that, yo, that. so yeah, so. For me, it's crazy that everybody else can root, every other fan base can root for their team and go berserk and go crazy. But when it comes to the Knicks, we got to reserve and be cool and cautious. Nah, I'm not doing none of that. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's soon, and I know championships change things, but let me tell y'all something. As soon as them 2015 Golden State Warriors won a championship, their fans changed, right? It yep. just changed. Let's keep it a buck. Their fan base completely changed, and they were loud and braggadocious, and and had no problem letting you know I'm a Warriors fan. Cool, cool. I don't understand, and to, to just to go off for of OG's point, I don't understand why we can't celebrate our team when <laughs> we're we're playing well. This is something to celebrate. I, I said, felt- I said, being a top three seed is an accomplishment and somebody asked me how is that an accomplishment see so see? Oh, so crazy so if we was dirt if we was a 12 seed we'd be the laughing stock of new york city and every time somebody came on a a live a youtube set anything it, it would be it would be regular jokes espn we would be the butt of the jokes right fellas fellas y'all want to you want to hear the hypocrisy you want to hear everybody's hypocrites Look how much praise they giving SGA and uh uh Ant Man for you know having a great season and having eight teams in the first and second seed. Isn't Brunson doing the same thing? Right. Yep. So we pray <laughs> we praise yep. and go crazy for them, but because remember, we can potentially be by the time the season ends, we can be a second seed and Brunson could be averaging twenty nine and be. Oh. And be second, they're not gonna give him first, which I think he deserved, but he can be all NBA second team. How are well, we he, not well, supposed it's, to go ahead, it's no, there's no question, there's no doubt that he's gonna be uh all, all NBA second team. There's no doubt about that. He doesn't make that 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 team or he makes third team. That's a problem. That's a problem. We we have been consistently in the playoff hunt all season long. I don't think we've ever fallen into playing contention. If we did, that was brief, maybe back after 20 games or so. But for the majority of this season, we have been a legitimate playoff team. Legit. Yep. That is an accomplishment because guess what? Teams don't make the playoffs every year. And some teams are just playing to get into the lottery, right? So, like, this is an accomplishment to be able to play the level of basketball, to to be, to win the amount of games we won with what was presented to us this season, not many teams will be able to weather the storm. Not many teams will be able to weather the storm. Not many coaches will be able to get out of the guys that what he's gotten out of Deuce McBride, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein, career Precious season. Achua, career people season. laughed. People laughed, OG. Oh, yep. Precious is just a throw-in. I said, yo, no, 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 no. Precious is a good player. We're going to use him. Like, so everything that we've had to go up against and and the fact that we're in the position we're in with three games left in the season and we're a three seed right now, I I, I, I just, that is no other word to use but hate. Or you just don't watch, or you just don't watch Nick basketball. 
every every minute shout out to tommy beard you know i wish i could do what they do and they, they really follow the knicks and just somehow they just track all the data and the stats he said last last season when alex caruso was named first team all in all defense no player scored more than 27 points when caruso was guarding them donovan mitchell had 27 points over four games it took him four games to get 27 against Alex Caruso, first team All-NBA <laughs> last year. This year, got, Alex Caruso, nobody scored 24 points on Alex Caruso, more than 24 points. Ant-Man had 24. SGA had 23. Nobody other than Jalen Brunson scored more than 24 points, and he had 42 last night. Go so every on, time, on, it's, it's every night, it's a new stat. Every minute, I should say, it feels like there's a new stat with him. Oh, and, Yeah. Dog walking Alex Caruso. Yeah, come on. Dog, hold on. Dog walking everybody. Let me tell you this. Everybody. Let me tell you this. What Brunson did this season, he put on alert for all the guards from the Dame Lillard to Trey Young to the job when he come back. Listen, the guard, like all these guards, I'm telling you right now, Jalen Brunson made the league forget about them. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And they, they, listen, man. What, what, what this, all I'm going to say is this, man. What this young man is doing, let me put away my Knicks hat for a minute. I just love the game. And we got to start respecting some of these guys, man. What this young man is doing at six feet tall, second round pick, even coming out of college, nobody believed. Three times Dallas Mavericks turned down, giving him, he only wanted $55 million. You go through all this, then you come to the Knicks. Oh, he was about to get in his bag. Then, then yeah. makes all the players and then makes all the players around him better. With all them guys is having career seasons, like Josh Hart been in the league a while. He ain't never looked like this. Hart and Steve, not to like, this, not on, to man. this level. Hell no! Are you I kidding mean, I, me? Yeah, I, I, I like Josh Hart from the Pelicans on. Like Josh Hart was was played well. He was he was not this. Talking Stop about. it. We're Stop talking about 20, we're big, talking about 20 nah, but he was a big time. Doubles. Yeah, but he was, I mean, 48 oh, minutes a game. But I understand what you're saying. But he was a big time. He, like th- I like Josh Hart before he came over here. When, he, when he we was got not him, this. that's the guy that I was like, yo, this was not, I mean, this was 40, 44 minutes, 48 minutes. This is what he's doing is incredible. Like the way he turned up, what Flea just said is the second most important player in the team this season. Listen, so you man. got him at second. Listen, this, Brunson- this season in totality, right? If we're fully healthy. No, that 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 changes. His, his oh, yeah, but, but the like, production right, of this, this season, season, yeah. What we what we had on our plate, nah, Josh, Josh, Josh is a big listen, reason why we have forty seven wins. Or listen, Brun- Brunson is Nino Brown. Remember the scene in New Jack City when uh Christopher Williams told Nino Brown, "You the difference of me making eight hundred dollars a week and eight thousand dollars a week." Yeah, that's the difference with Josh Hart being in New Orleans and being in New York. Listen, man. The Brunson effect is real. I've never listen. He has more effect on the game than majority of your superstars right now. Look at the effect uh KD is having on Phoenix. Dirt. Literally dirt. I'm a big Dame Lillard fan. The effect he's having on Milwaukee, dirt. Listen, man. Jalen Brunson put the spotlight on New York City, on the whole Knicks organization, and all those players. They look fun to play with, they fun to watch. They fun. Listen, man, it's just fun. And nobody plays harder than the Knicks. Listen, man, it's a new day and people need to put they, they uh, hate to the side for the Knicks and understand this is not the same Knicks from 5, 10, 15 years ago. We not a joke. And like I said, we have a bona fide superstar. And I've been saying it all year, Flea. He's a superstar, bro. You have, you have, you have from, from shit, from the preseason. <laughs> Divin, might not even... D, right, DiVincenzo and Josh Hart does not get on the cover of Slam without Jalen Brunson. That is huge. Right. And when 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 certain things happen, that means you arrive. Those guys have arrived, man, and we are legit and we are for real. And I'm gonna leave it at this. And we're not even fully healthy. Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah, man, you could look up a bunch of stuff with the. With this. Every second, I think Brun- the Brunson effect is real. The, even when, like you said, Steph, I said earlier, I tweeted in 2013, yo, Steph Curry is the new logo. Like, we were so happy for it. Like, we saw everything. If you're a hater, you won't see it. But he was making everybody better. Every other second, there was a new a new record. The Steph Curry effect was real. 
And this is really the last guy that did this was before Brunson was Steph Curry. That's the only comparison. I think me and uh, all boys about that early on, on the phone. So I don't, I guess it's, it's still new for them. It's new for, um, the, it is, in the JJ Reddit clip, he said that the media always catches up a year later. Because really, people catch up a year later. You After you get over all the hate, because really you hate, you, you kind of hate on yourself. You're showing your cars when you're hating like this. You're really showing right, your cars. Right. I don't want to be around you. Cause you're not you're not trying to celebrate things in life. You're trying to like look at the bad the bad out um outset of it. But yeah, man, I think Brunson deserves to be high on the MVP list. We're killing right now. I think who's up right now? Was it was Milwaukee? I know Dallas. I, I, I know Dallas is thumping Miami right now at halftime. Oh, Milwaukee's up 25-27. Yeah. But you know what, fellas? I'm gonna be honest. Certain teams, I'm still gonna respect in the playoffs. Like I said, I. You know, I'll put us against anybody, but still, you know, when you got a Giannis and Dame Lillard in the playoffs, that's still a different beast. Um, You know, so, you know, I'm still going to respect certain teams, certain players, but, you know, I just think, you know, when people talk about the Knicks, the laughter, the jokes, the disrespect, it needs to stop. Because how more consistent does this young man in this organization have to be? OG, it's, how? It, it, OG like, it's just people that, you know, at the end of the day, just want to be a part of the conversation. Anybody that's watching what's going on right now with Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks, there's no way that you can fix your mouth to say he hasn't had an amazing season. He's not, you know, shouldn't be in MVP talks. Uh, he's not in the top 10 players of this season, right? If you, if, 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 if that bothers you to say that, then that's you. That ain't got shit to do with the Knicks or Jalen Brunson. Right, any, right. any, anybody with, you know, with an able mind should realize, yo, this dude is doing some great shit and he's elevating the Knicks. Not, not, not the Trailblazers, not the Pelicans, not the Kings. He's elevating the Knicks. So he, he deserves way more love, way more conversation. Um, I'm glad that there's some 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 recognition being shown right now. Slam putting them on the front of that front of that magazine, right? I went to a summer league game last year in New York City, Pro City. I went to Pro City last year, and at Pro City, uh, one of the teams had uh, Julius Randle, had uh, Jalen Brunson, um, had a uh, and then one other Nick, right? And the opposing team beat that team that had Brunson and, and, and Julius Randle and all that and a bunch of other but bunch of other players. And a bunch of guys are going around New York City talking about we beat the Knicks. We beat the Knicks. We beat the Knicks, right? This was the talk for the summer in street ball, right? We beat the Knicks. You could never step on an NBA floor with Jalen Brunson fully fully healthy, ready to go and talk that we beat the Knicks crap. Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out. So love what, my, love what our team is doing, man. Um, I'm going to jump. I appreciate appreciate you having me, Faye. OG, right, you the best. Happy. You know that, brother. Um, Come on. Love y'all brothers. Love you, love you, love you, too, OG. you know, um, Faye, I get with you, man. Yeah, we about to end the show. Uh, so to your point, I think it was Nostalgic Nick or I forgot who it was. Milwaukee's playing Orlando twice and then they play OKC. They're up on uh, Orlando right now. and uh, But that's important that they play OKC where OKC has something to play for for that final right. game. So all ball, flea, you already know what time it is. Favorite perspective. They don't like comentario. Isus Isus. Oh, TV. They scared, but I'm not.